end of this tutorial when we talk specifically about HDV, but I do want to point it out because it is a change in this menu screen. We have 4x3 interlace and progressive that we had in Smart It Up 4. We also have 16x9 anamorphic and progressive. Again, we had those choices in Smart It Up 4 operating system. The big change in Smart It Up 5, again, is the HDV capability. And it is in this screen here that you would set up your project according to how you want your finished project to look to the audience. The other important feature that the developers have modified in the project setting screens falls under the delete button. Previously, you'd click delete and you had, uh, long ago, you had only one choice. In fact, let's go ahead and go to a project here where I have some work going on in my smart edit project here. Now, if I click delete, which is always a button I approach with great hesitancy because it will do what you ask it to. The new choices are as follows. I can delete the contents of the storyboard, so all those clips up inside my storyboard, or I could choose to delete all the scenes in the scene bin, or I could choose to delete all my samples. And in Casablanca language, we're talking about your audio samples, all your audio pieces. Or you can see that you can delete one of them, or you could delete two of them and the choice is entirely yours. So the developers gave us a great many more choices in the Smart Edit 5 environment customized to work with how you work. You'll notice, and just a little tip here, as I'm working with Smart Edit 5, I have chosen to identify my, my, my projects uh, uh, pertaining to the, uh, the, the technical mode that I'm using. So these first two projects I've labeled SD for standard definition, and you can see that my third project, which we'll look at later in the tutorial, is footage from Yellowstone National Park. That was shot using an HDV camera, and so I have labeled that an HD project. In Smart Edit 5, there's no substantive changes in the video settings menu, so we're going to jump right to record. And there's one minor change in the record menu, and this is particularly pertinent if you're doing HDV project work, is uh, in Smart Edit 3 and 4, we had the capability to ride the gain, which means to adjust the volume as you're making the recording, as you can see that I'm doing here by sliding this gain switch up and down. In HDV mode, this choice is not available because of the way the signal is compressed. As we work our way into the edit screen, one of the nice features, if you spend a lot of time in front of your interface, is right here in the right side of the screen. The developers gave us the capability to be able to look at the name of the project that we're working on. So you may recall I'm in project number one, which is SD Smart Edit. And so what appears right here is the name of that particular project. So again, if you're spending a lot of time in front of the interface, if you've got similar project clips between different projects, you may be doing some different things with the same footage. This is a, a nice handy feature the developers gave us. Earlier I mentioned that uh, the, the smart rendering capability has changed. And again, just let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to march up here and turn on smart rendering if I can find the panel. There we go. We'll go ahead and turn on smart rendering. And again, we have the capability to render the last insert last. So if I go over here and add a, a transition, I'm a, uh, yeah, let's go with the Motion 3D, which are very, very popular effects and very attractive. Okay? As I add that effect, you can see it's rendering in the background. And I come over here and add an additional effect. You see it completed the first one before it went to the second one. Now, I do need to point out that today I am working on the Renome Plus, which is the fastest Casablanca ever created. It is just phenomenal. And those of you who work with Motion 3D, you may have to rub your eyes and say, did he really do that? Was this edited? No, you saw that in real time. That's how fast the 3.8 gigahertz processor is working in the Renome Plus and the Solitaire Plus. So you can see that's how the changes the, uh, the smart rendering feature. Let me go back into the edit window. There's another change as well that is impacted in smart, smart rendering. If I go and take a scene, and you see I've got a two second long scene. Let's go ahead and it's 220. Let's trim that down to two seconds here. Nice shot of uh, Tucson, Arizona in the background. Um, if I go into the special menu and go to add an effect or filter, for example, maybe I want to um, make some modifications in the coloring. 
and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, control image capability. I could adjust the brightness, contrast, or saturation on this piece here. Let's do a full-size preview on this, and we could make some modifications. As I click OK and say, yeah, apply these changes to that scene, you'll see that the background rendering is taking place. And in Smart Edit 5, it puts that newly created clip to the right, adjacent to the scene you just worked on. So essentially, it's making a copy and putting it here. Smart Edit 4 folks will appreciate that because it used to deposit it at the very end of the scene bin. And many editors have been asking for this change because they feel like it's a more convenient way to do their work. Let me show you another piece that is a, a nice change in the edit window. Actually, it appears in many windows. In any of the windows where you have the capability to make uh, modifications via the sliders, you can see right now all my sliders are at 100%. Well, if I go to adjust, uh, maybe subtract the amount of green in this scene here, and you see that I've mo changed that modification to 68%, simply by clicking on the number, it brings it back to the preset value, which is really cool. So as you're making modifications, if you slide that over and say, oh, I don't like it, I want to go back to where I had it, again, simply click on the number that you changed, and it will bring it back to that preset value. Very, very handy. Those are the substantive changes that we have in the edit screen in Smart Edit 4. And you can see that it's uh, working on fixing that particular scene, changing it with the color choices that I wanted to create there.